will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Bozrah, as a flock in the midst of their pasture. They shall make great noise by a reason of the multitude of men. Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Stephen Shelley and you're watching The Eagles Cry. I want to welcome you to the program today and thank you for tuning in. And I hope perhaps that you're one who watches each and every week on this great Christian network. But if perchance this is your first time, then I want to welcome you. And I want to just tell you what our heart is. Our heart is to preach, to present, teach, um, I guess you could hardly call it preaching because we're not standing behind a pulpit, but uh, we're sitting here in this chair uh, teaching, sharing our heart, and the vision is to help prepare and equip you for the great move of the Spirit of God that's coming upon this earth just before the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that we're moving into the days of the kingdom. And uh, we are so grateful to God for how He has opened up the doors for us to be able to reach you by satellite television. Perhaps you're watching this as a podcast. And uh, if that be the case, then we want to thank the Lord for that technology as well. What a wonderful way for us to be able to send to you an episode of The Eagle's Cry that you can download onto your computer and even download right onto an MP3, MP4 player and watch it, listen anytime. Well, we just believe that uh, as we move into that direction, there are going to be many wonderful things taking place. And you can keep up with what's going on at New Hope Revival Ministries by visiting our webpage at revival.org, revival.org. If you prefer to contact us by mail, then the address is given to you at the bottom of the screen, and we're even willing to take your phone calls. Now, we're here during uh, regular business hours in our part of the world, so you're going to have to make some adjustments to know exactly the right time if you choose to call, but we'd be happy to hear from you. We're getting prayer requests almost on a daily basis, and we've been asking for prayer requests for long enough now that we're beginning to get praise reports. <laughs> we're beginning to get testimonies of how the Lord is answering prayer. Uh, in fact, today, uh, not necessarily this testimony didn't come because of the eagle's cry, but just because of the ministry that the Lord has given us in general. But I heard from a mother just today who sent in a prayer request, a family that I met many years ago, uh, sent in a prayer request for a son that was addicted to drugs, very serious drugs. And uh, it just seemed like he was going down for the last count. And she sent in a prayer request. We all sincerely join with her in prayer. And she has sent in a prayer request to say that God has prevailed, that Jesus has delivered and set her son totally free from the power of those drugs. And we're just believing that God's going to use his testimony to reach others who are in the same condition. Perhaps you're bound. Perhaps you have something that is bigger than you are that has control of your life. Well, I want you to know that there's freedom in Jesus. I want you to know that he has the power to set even the captives free. And we are just believing that uh, your faith will be inspired today as we teach the word of God to you that you'll just reach up and believe and call on the Lord and that you will experience the same deliverance and liberty in your own life. Hundreds and thousands of people, millions of people, I guess would be a more accurate number, have experienced the deliverance and the healing power of Jesus Christ around the world. And if you have not experienced it for yourself, it's not too late. You can invite the Lord into your life and I know that he will make a change. The apostle Paul said, Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that is what happens when we surrender our lives to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So 
Don't forget to visit our webpage. Contact us. Let us know that you're watching the Eagles Cry and share with us any prayer requests that you have. We believe in the power of prayer and we believe in the power of agreement. And we want to agree with you in faith and then watch God take over. We want to watch Him move. And when He gets involved, He changes things. He can change even the darkest circumstance. Well, we want to get right into the Word of God. We've been speaking to you on, uh, from the book of Isaiah. And the theme has been from obscurity to visibility. Let's look to the Word of God together. In Isaiah chapter 58, we've been studying these verses together. And I don't want to uh, go back and take my time to go through the whole study. I hope that you have been able to follow. If not, again, go to the webpage, click uh, on and subscribe to the podcast and you can go back and watch the episodes that you've missed. I'm excited about being able to offer that to you absolutely free of charge. If you have a computer, then you can just follow this series all the way through. If you'd like to order it on DVD, you can do that as well. Now it's time to preach or to teach. Isaiah chapter 58, and we've been talking about uh, as a theme, verse 10 and 11. Let me read them to you quickly. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. The last time we were together, we moved in to verse 11 and it says, And the Lord shall guide thee continually. I don't know about you, but that's a promise that I need. I'm going to stand on that one for myself right here today, that God would guide me continually. He said he would satisfy thy soul in drought, even when it's dry, even when it's barren all around you, even when you're living in adverse circumstances of darkness and uh, famine spiritually and drought. Oh, he said, I will satisfy your soul and make fat your bones. What a promise. It speaks of health and, and of course spiritual prosperity and we also believe that God is able to bless and provide for our natural needs as well. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. A garden that has automatic irrigation. <laughs> when water is needed, water is provided. Now, doesn't that sound just like the Lord? You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. There is no end to the supply of the living water that the Lord Jesus Christ wants to give us in this hour as he moves us from obscurity to visibility. Now again, remember the definition of obscurity is a lack of clearness or clarity. It also means a difficulty in being understood. And then it also speaks about being little known or perhaps being in the shade. And God says your light is going to rise in obscurity. And so you may feel very distracted. You may feel like you have a difficulty understanding and having clarity in God's word, hearing his voice, knowing his will. But we're entering into a new season. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in this season, we're believing that God is going to give us special clearness, clarity to know the mind of God and the will of God. And so we thank the Lord for this great transition. I tell a story. I'm not sure if I've told it here on the Eagle's Cry or not, but uh, if I have, would you bear with me a little bit and let me tell it quickly again. Uh, some years ago, you know I have four children. My oldest just turned nine. My youngest just turned one years old. She's walking all over the house. Her name is Mariah Destiny. Uh, my oldest is Benjamin Judah, and then my second son, Joshua River, and then our third daughter uh, is our third child, which is a daughter, uh, Olivia Zion. But when I think... Uh, Perhaps Benjamin was oh, a couple years old, three years old or so, and Joshua was a baby. We went to the zoo in Atlanta. Uh, when I was a little boy, we used to visit Zoo Atlanta. And even my mother tells me that when she was a little girl, she used to visit the zoo in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. And there was a special uh, gorilla 
who lived in the zoo. A very young gorilla when my mother was going to see uh, this gorilla as a young girl. But as I was old enough to go and see, the gorilla was getting older. And a few years ago, the gorilla died. And the gorilla's name was Willie B. And it was famous. There were billboards that said, have you been to see Willie B lately? And uh, so uh, initially, Willie B was kept in a, a glass cage with some iron bars. But as the zoo progressed and prospered, they built, oh, such a beautiful habitat for gorillas. And they're breeding these gorillas. It, oh, it's such a beautiful uh, enclosure, and they've got families, you know, the gorillas are making families and so forth and et cetera. And so anyway, Willie B. died. He was very old, and he died. And, and uh, I think I remember reading in the paper, and we get to Zoo Atlanta, and we're walking around. I hadn't been in years, but uh, so it all looked new to me, and we came across across a, a, a little area where there was a crowd gathered and we stopped, stopped, my wife stopped pushing the stroller. I think my mother was with us and we wondered what was going on and we realized that we had walked into something like a press conference. The media was there and there was a, a couple uh, people, a couple gentlemen standing and I recognized the mayor of Atlanta and wondered what was going on and all of a sudden I looked and I saw this big clump of something covered up with a black cloth or like a blanket, uh, sort of a, a satiny looking blanket. And what we realized was they were unveiling a statue. And the, the artist who had come from somewhere far away had come to be a part of this great unveiling of this great masterpiece. And so when the time came, the artist uh, pulled off the cover. And of course, we were just standing there waiting to see what this beautiful sculpture was going to be. And it was it was Willie B. It was a bronze sculpture of this very famous gorilla. But I have to tell you, the detail was, was extravagant and it was beautiful. Well, anyway, it was as beautiful as a gorilla can be. And it was exciting. I, 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 I was excited. I've never forgotten it. Several times during the day, we bumped into the sculptor and talked to him and he talked to the children and so forth. And sometimes in the spirit, this uh, experience that I had in the natural will come back to me in the spirit. And I've wondered about that. Why does this come back to me? Sometime I'm in prayer, sometime I'm worshiping the Lord, sometime I'm preaching, and it comes back to me. And I, I think I've got the answer. I think it's a part of this uh, release. I hope you don't think I've lost my mind uh, when I say it this way, but I think it's a part of this whole release of God bringing us from obscurity to visibility. He's working on a masterpiece and the masterpiece is you. You're the masterpiece. You see, I believe according to the scripture that from all of time back way to the Garden of Eden, God has been working on a bride. He's building a bride. The scripture tells us in Revelation 19 that we should rejoice for the marriage of the Lamb has come and the wife or his wife, the wife of the Lamb, hath made herself ready. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I have a personal revelation that I am a part of the wife of the heavenly bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody said, well, doesn't that sound a little sissy? Well, you call it anything you want to. I just want to have a relationship, a real one, not a religious one. You know, uh, a couple uh, emails have come in from people who uh, were not critical, but giving me a little bit of a warning because I have said a few things about the organized church. I'm not against the organized church, but I'm against anything that's dead. I'm against anything that names the name of Jesus, but there's no life to it. It's all tradition and ritual. Uh, that's what I am. I am. I have to be honest. I, I, I'm against that. And you say, why? Because it's robbing, uh oh, here I go. It's robbing God's people of the life that Jesus promised us for today. John 10, 10 said, I have come that you might have life and not that you would sit somewhere in a dead mausoleum and, and reminisce about what God was. 
But he said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it how? More abundantly. Hallelujah. I believe in the book of Acts. I believe that every church should be an extension of the book of Acts. I believe that the living church of Jesus Christ must be more than rituals, traditions, and icons. We've got to be a people. We've got to be a body. The ecclesia in, in Greek is, is a fellowship, a community of believers who go forth in the power and demonstration of Almighty God. And so uh, I, I certainly take your uh, thoughts into consideration. I hope that you have... Uh, misunderstood me perhaps I've misunderstood you and and, and we're just trying to iron that out but uh, I, I'm not going to change my mind because I've read the book I've read the book and the book tells me this book the Bible the Holy Word of God tells me what church is supposed to be like what it's supposed to look like what it's supposed to act like how it's supposed to function it's supposed to function like the church that was born on the day of Pentecost, Shavuot. And we read about that birth in Acts chapter 2. Get your Bible out sometime and read the book of Acts. And if you're not experiencing in your life what those men and women experienced, then we want to reach up higher. I am not a cessationist. I do not believe that these things are finished and over with and done when the apostles died. I believe that Hebrews 13 and 8 is the theme. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. What he did yesterday, he's able to do again today. What's he waiting on? He's waiting on you and I. Uh, a great, let me get back. <laughs> did I go off on a little trail there? Uh, but I won't take it back because I feel it inspired. I feel, feel like you need to know where I'm coming from. I'm not against any particular church or any particular brand of religion or denomination or whatever. And when I say traditional church, I don't necessarily mean orthodoxy. I, I, I just mean any group of people that have settled, whoever you are, whoever we are, if we have settled for form instead of power, if we have settled for religious function instead of spirituality, uh, if we have settled for a painted fire. Now, if you're lost in a, in a snowstorm, in a blizzard, you need more than a picture of a fire in a magazine to keep you warm. You need to be able to do more than, than find a picture in the encyclopedia and hold your hands up to it and hope that that's going to be enough to keep you alive. You need to find the real fire. Well, I want you to know I have found the real fire. As a seven-year-old boy, I was baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire that was 32 years ago and that fire of God is still burning in my heart and I despise religion. I'm looking for reality. And I believe that's what's happening behind the veil, underneath the, the, the sheet or the curtain, underneath the sculpture, the great, not sculpture, we're the sculpture, the creation. He is the sculptor, the creator. I believe that underneath this veil, the great sculptor is working on us, shaping us, molding us into his likeness and into his image. I heard a great man of God, in fact a prophet in this uh, prior generation, William Branham, talk about going to Los Angeles many years ago and visiting the famous cemetery where many, many important people, including great Hollywood actors of that era, were buried. And in that same forest lawn uh, cemetery and in that same place, uh, the great woman evangelist, healing evangelist, Amy Simple McPherson is buried. And many years ago, uh, William Branham died in 1965, so that's a long time ago. Uh, but many years ago, he said that he visited the grave uh, at the invitation of Rolf McPherson, Amy Simple McPherson's son, he visited her grave and paid honor and respect to a great woman 
and they wanted to take him on a little tour of the cemetery and in the cemetery, in some of the uh, mausoleums or, or chapels or whatever you might would, would find, there are uh, duplicates or, or copies of great sculptures that are housed in beautiful places around the world. And one of the sculptures that took Brother Branham's attention was this great uh, sculpture uh, that Michelangelo did of Moses. And Moses is sitting with the tablets in his arms and so forth. And, and they told Brother Branham a story that he really liked. And he said that when Michelangelo had worked so uh, ferociously hard on making this beautiful sculpture and he wouldn't let, it, wouldn't let anybody see it and uh, he was doing it privately and working many, 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 many hours of the day and night. And he was... Uh, coming to a place where he was almost finished and one day he was caught in the inspiration of what he had created. It, it inspired him. It looked so real what he had made with his hands and it was almost like he was standing before Moses. But it was a sculpture of Moses. But it, it, it so took him. He was so caught up in the spirit of what he had created with his own hands that he struck the sculpture on the knee, leaving a scar on the sculpture. He struck it and he said, speak. He was so inspired. And this that had come from his imagination and he had created it with his own hands it became so real. It looked so real that he said, speak to me, speak. And you know, that's exactly what I believe. I believe that behind the veil, oh, hallelujah. I believe that behind the veil, the Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is working on a bride. He's working on a masterpiece. He is dealing with our attitudes that are unlike him. Dealing with the vices and habits of our life that, that have control over us instead of us having control over them. Dealing with the soulish issues of man. Working on the inside of the inside. And, and you know what I mean. Iron sharpeneth iron. And God's knocking off the rough edges of our life. And I believe that we're getting ready to step out from obscurity into visibility. I believe there's a, a, a great generation of people, a company of people that are about to step forth in the power, in the glory, and in the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ, finishing his ministry, carrying on what he uh, started, what he accomplished, carrying it on. As the disciples came to him and said, what must we do that we might work the works of God? You know, this might work better if I could fold my hands and tie them in my lap or something. Uh, I probably distract you. I'm, I'm sorry, but I just get a little bit excited sometime when I think about being a part of that. And, you know, it's not pleasant having the blanket over your face, but God's doing that because he loves us and he's protecting us and he's working on us in secret, but he's getting ready to introduce us. He's getting ready to launch us. He's getting ready to send us forth into the marketplace, into the nations to accomplish what needs to be accomplished before the end of the end. I believe we're living in the end days. I believe we're in the end times now. And we're making preparation for the end of the end. And when I say that, I mean the end of what we know is this old world. I'm getting ready to go home to live with my heavenly Father forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. While, while ages roll on and when time has surrendered to eternity, we're going to still be in the presence of our Creator. I want to make it. I want to, uh, to go home one of these days, but not without having accomplished what he has called me, the reason, the destiny, of the purpose for which I was born. And you, my friend, whether you feel great or small, whether you feel qualified or disqualified, whether you feel sufficient or insufficient, God has a purpose and he has a plan in your life. 
And it's time for you, hallelujah, to get out of obscurity, to let the Spirit of the Lord invite you into a place where you can hear more clearly His voice, where you can articulate and share what He whispers in your ear. A great friend, a great prophetic man in America, his name is Bobby Connor, and he says something that I love so much. He says that God shouts His truths but whispers His secrets. And we want to be able to hear both the shouting, the trumpet voice, and we want to be able to hear the still, small voice that whispers the love secrets to us because He loves us so much. And so let me just encourage you to press on, hold on with everything that's within you. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. And I know times are tough and things are ugly, and the hour looks bleak, and your body is uh, perhaps uh, suffering, maybe you're in pain, maybe your family is in a mess, maybe your job situation is a wreck, but I just tell you, I, I implore you, hold on, hold on, my friend, my brother, my sister, hold on, because the darkest hours just before the dawn, uh, a beautiful old anthem of the church, hold on my child, joy comes in the morning, hallelujah. And I just feel like telling you that the Lord wants to take your ashes and give you gold and silver. I believe God wants to take the darkness of your midnight and cause light to rise in your obscurity. I just believe that God wants to turn some things around for you suddenly as you turn your faith loose to believe. If we can only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And, you know, we don't have to know how God's going to do it to believe that he is going to. We don't have to understand how. The how is what trips us up, you know, and sometimes even the when. But we need to believe that he is. He is, he is, he is. The scripture said he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Let's seek Him like we've never sought Him before. He will meet us because there's two unveilings going on. He wants to unveil us to bring us out and He is unveiling Himself before us that we could understand Him more. Father, I just thank You for the wonderful presence of the Lord that is in this place. May it go out. May it somehow transfer May it drop down into the home of every person watching this program. May, may their faith be stirred up and ignited. May they not be satisfied with painted fire, but seek to find the real fire of the Holy Spirit of God and be changed and transformed in your wonderful, lovely name. And I pray for the sick right now because you are our healer and our source. B'Shem Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching the Eagles Cry. Tune in again. Bye-bye for now.